Hey, what's up guys? It's Siwi here. Today we'll be covering the straight swords, we're doing an in-depth review of these. We did just get done doing the curve swords a couple of days ago, so if you are interested in that video, you can check it out after this one. The way these work is that I pretty much just go over every single um, weapon in the game for that specific category. All will be at fully upgraded. The weapon stats are at 40 strength, 40 dex, 40 intelligence, faith, and arcane, all at 40. Make it a much more consistent feel for all the damages. The way I have it set out is that at first I'll be going over the weapon um, moveset, then I'll get to the weapons themselves looking at all the scalings and telling you which one it's best paired with for that, for a specific infusion. Then at the end I'll go over the scale, uh, go over um, a damage chart that I have, just comparing all the weapons together. And at that point I'll tell you which weapon is best paired for which specific build. And then at the end of all that I'll just rank them all there. I do have time sets for all this stuff, so if you are interested in seeing something in particular, you can just go skip to that if it so pleases you. But yeah, without further ado, we'll just, just get straight to the moveset. Going over this, the basic light attack combo, you do get a nice 5 hit combo, a bunch of horizontal swipes, which is really good. The regular heavy attack is just a nice poke. The follow up isn't really the best, but I do like that initial poke. Rolling attack is really good as well. Running attack, nice and quick, can't complain, as is the jumping heavy. Back steps, crouching, all not too bad. Going over the power stance moveset, which is really good, comparable to the curved sword. Running attack, not too much of a fan of, but although it's not too bad. Rolling attacks aren't terrible either. Going over the basic weapon art for most of the swords anyway, most of the straight swords, is square off. So holding onto L2, clicking R1 will do this little uppercut attack, and then a long poking attack for the R2. These don't seem that flashy, but they do a lot of damage. So for this attack, it pretty much does about like three times the amount of damage as a regular R1. And this will do about like five times as much damage as a regular R1. So yeah, it's kind of insane. It's not too bad. And we'll just go straight into the first weapon. So first weapon we'll be covering is go over the short sword first. So yeah, looking at the length of the short sword, definitely a short sword on the shorter side. Uh, we find this weapon from a merchant somewhere around about here. You can just buy it off him. The only differences in the moveset is the heavy attack. You just get two poking attacks, which honestly is a little bit better. It tries to compensate for the less range that it has. Yeah, you do get a kick as well for its weapon art. Which, it's it's not bad. It's a kick. The kick's definitely better in this game, but... Although you have to use a weapon skill to use it. Okay, going over the scalings on all the infusions so at heavy you get a b keen you get an a quality you get double b's flame art you get a b in faith which is also going to be the same as sacred for magic you get a b in intelligence and for cold you're getting triple c's okay next we'll be going over the long sword we just could cover the move set so we're gonna have to get into that um you find this weapon at the round table hold you can just buy it off the maiden over there Going over the scaling, so B for Faith, B for Keen, double B's for Quality, a B for Faith, a B, a B in Faith for Flame Art and Sacred. As for Magic, you do get a B in Intelligence, and as for Cold, you get a C in Strength and C in Intelligence. This weapon is best paired with a Quality build, so if you do want to run the Longsword, Quality, you get your best returns out of it. Here we have the broadsword, at plus 25 is doing 443 damage. Looking at the length of it, let's compare it to the longsword, honestly, isn't that much shorter. In the previous games, it used to be a lot shorter, but honestly, they're about the same. Before they just did like a lot more damage and it was a lot shorter was the trade-off, but now it's the same length, so that's pretty good. Um, the moveset, the only difference is the heavy attack. Honestly, not too big of a fan of it. I do prefer the pokes, and the rolling attacks aren't that good either. It does have the same running attacks, which is nice, but the rolling attacks and the heavies aren't really the best. Going over the infusions, um, you're getting an A in heavy, a B in dexterity, double Bs in quality. Um, flame art and sacred, you get a C. Magic, you get a C. And um, cold, you get a B and a C. So as to what build is best paired with this weapon, honestly anything. Like spoilers, but the broadsword is the best weapon to pair. Is is the best weapon 
full stop. When it comes to infusions, weapons that can be infused, it's the best straight sword. So yeah, literally anything, you, you'll be good. You'll be good. Okay, next we have the weathered straight sword. Looking at the length, compared to the long sword, is on the shorter side. It's still a little bit... Actually, no, it's the same, exactly the same length as the short sword. So yeah, already not that good. <laughs> Looking at the movesets, exactly the same as the long sword. That's where you find this weapon, you can just farm it off any common enemy, whether it be in the Stormhill Castle, Redmain Castle, anywhere in Lind Lindell, pretty much anywhere. Um, as for all the infusions, B in strength, uh, B in dex, double Bs for in quality, flame art, you get a C in faith, same as sacred. C in intelligence and magic and cold, you'll get a DCC. As to which one to pair it with, honestly, nothing. This weapon is outclassed by a lot of the other straight swords in the game, so I wouldn't really recommend this weapon at all. I'll go into it later, obviously, when I have like the chart comparing all the damage numbers and even the rankings. But yeah, don't really recommend the weathered straight sword. Okay, so now we have the Lord Sworn straight sword. Looking at the length of the weapon compared to the long sword, pretty much the exactly the same length. Um, move sets exactly the same as the long sword. As to where you find this weapon, you can farm it in the gate front ornaments of that one enemy that builds it. Looking at all of the damage numbers, so you get a B in strength, a B in dex, double Bs for quality, C in faith for sacred and flame art. Cold, you get triple Cs, and then magic, you get a C in intelligence. This one is definitely best paired with Keen. So Keen Infusion, you get the best returns for it. It does the most damage, but more than any other straight sword when you Keen Infuse it as well. At 40 dexterity at least. Here we have the Noble Slender Sword comparing weapon lengths. So the long sword is definitely longer. I think this one's tied for the like longest straight sword in the game. So that's a really good sign. It retains the exact same moveset as the longsword, so nothing to go over there. You find this weapon from the Wandering Nobles anywhere in Limgrave or in Rayo Lucario. Going over the Ashes of War. A in Heavy for Strength. A in Dexterity with Keen Infusion. Double Bs for Quality, Flame Art, and Sacred. You get a B in Faith. B in Intelligence for Magic. And a B in Dexterity and C in Intelligence for Cold. As to which one this is best paired with, honestly, like anything is okay, but it is outclassed heavily by the longsword and the broadsword at um, 40 points into the stats. So if you have 40 points into the stats, I wouldn't really recommend using this weapon. So obviously with the scaling, it does get A's and B's, which is a lot more than the other straight swords we've covered so far. So if you have about like 60 points into a stat or 80 points into a stat, you pre you'll probably see better returns with this weapon. But at 40 points, it's definitely heavily outclassed by the broadsword and the longsword. Okay, now time for the cane sword. Looking at the length compared to the longsword, it's a little bit shorter. As for the moveset, it retains the exact same one as the broadsword. As to where you find this weapon, it is in Lindell Royal Capital, somewhere like around about here. Going over the scalings for the cane sword. B in strength for heavy infusion, A in dex for keen, B in qualities for, yep, yeah, double Bs for quality, C in faith for flame art and sacred, C in intelligence for magic, and you get a B and a C for cold. As to what I'd recommend, honestly nothing. The damage is abysmal, it's poor, it's terrible. It's a spit in the face to the threaded cane and bloodborne. It's just a not good weapon at all. Then at time for probably like the coolest looking straight sword in the game, the Warhawk's Talon. Going over the moveset, everything's the same except for the R2s. You get these nice little cool like double slashes. Like so you're fully charged. It's like a really nice lunge and a really nice double slash. It's pretty freaking cool. Yeah, probably the best heavy attack for the straight swords. As to where you find this weapon, it's in Stormbill Castle. It drops off those fucking annoying bird enemies that have these as feet. At plus 25, you're doing 400 damage. Going over the scalings, uh, you get a B in heavy, A in dexterity, double Bs for quality, B in faith and sacred. 
magic, he gets a B in intelligence. And frost, you get a B and a C. So it is nice, uh, nice scaling. As to what I'd recommend, probably like qual uh, actually any of the magic ones, so faith or sacred after looking at the damage numbers. Unfortunately, the damage isn't as good as the other ones, so it is it is outclassed. But with this higher scaling, you will get better returns with higher points. Because my points are obviously at 40, so it doesn't really go that high. Yeah. Okay, now time for the weapons that cannot be infused with an Ash of War. So first is going over the Lazuli's Glintstone Sword. Looking over the weapon length. Very similar to the Longsword, if not exactly the same. The scaling, it gets a C in Strength, D in Dexterity, D in Intelligence, with a total damage AR of 592. The obviously is at 40 in every single stat. Weapon move that's exactly the same, except for the heavy attacks. It has this weird little like animation thing that I'm not really a big fan of. I don't know what that charge attack is, it's kind of weird. Going over the weapon art, you get pronounced as a glenstone pebble, but a very, very short glenstone pebble. Seems pretty useless, but in PvP it will actually do a lot of damage and it is kind of annoying. And it's pretty quick, so it's hard to dodge as well. You can literally just keep spamming this and win that way. It's literally that easy. Okay, next we have the Carrion Knight Sword. Looking at the length of it compared to the long sword, just a little bit longer, which is nice. Looking at the scaling, C in strength, D in dexterity, D in intelligence, 625 total damage AR at 40 in every single stat. Weapon moves, that's exactly the same as the last weapon with those weird heavy attacks that I'm not a big fan of. Uh, you find this weapon off. Around about here, be like these two troll enemies that are pushing this big wagon, be at the back of the back of that wagon in the chest. Okay, now covering the crystal sword, looking at the length of it compared to the long sword. Pretty much exactly the same. Crystal sword gets a C in strength, D in dexterity, and intelligence. Obviously, it's an intelligence-based weapon. Does six hundred and twenty-two overall damage at forty in all stats. Looking at the weapon moveset, does have the exact same as the longsword moveset, which is really nice. It has a spinning slash for the weapon art, which is honestly isn't the best. It's like the curved sword weapon art. You, obviously, being that you can't infuse it, you can't change this at all. So I do recommend just using this in the offhand if you are going to power stance weapons. Uh, you'll find this weapon in this village area here. It'll just like be in like a wooden bridge in a body. You'll pick it up from there. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the Crystal Sword. Next we have the Rotten Crystal Sword. Comparing weapon lengths. It's it pretty much the exact same as the regular Crystal Sword, but just the Rotten version. Uh, you'll find this weapon in... All the way up here. Pretty much near this room. There'll be like those three crystal enemies that drop it. Oh, actually, no, they drop it. There'll be three crystal enemies guarding the chest that has this inside. Um, the weapon moves it's identical to the Crystal Sword in every way. Scaling C index, or in C and strength, the index and intelligence with a total damage AR of 598. So it is less than the Crystal Sword, however, it does have the passive effect of, ca of causing a Scarlet Rot buildup, which is really nice. So honestly, prefer I prefer this one over the Crystal Sword, even though it does less damage. To have that Scarlet Rot buildup is pretty, pretty good, because being that Scarlet Rot is pretty broken in this game. You just get to just have damage over time against bosses, so you can just have this in your offhand, just keep hitting, hitting a boss. And you'll eventually call Scarlet Rot, and it'll just take damage over time, which is really nice to have. Okay, next we have the McKillen Night Sword, comparing the length. Just a bit longer than the Lord, uh, Long Sword. Looking at the scaling, you get a D all around, pretty much. The total damage AR are 589. You'll find this weapon in Elfail, all the way over here. It'll be like up this bell tower, be inside there. Going over the moveset, it's very ever so slightly different just because of the heavy attack, which is honestly really good. You get this really nice lunging attack. Like I have a cover this open before in my faith video. I've used open a lot. I really like this heavy attack. As for the weapon art, you, you get Sacred Blade, free plus 85 holy damage for 20 seconds, as well as the projectile attack. So you see now we're doing 674 total AR, obviously at 40 in every single stat. That's pretty much it for the McKillen sword. Okay, here we have the ornamental straight sword, looking at the length of the weapon. 
just a bit smaller than longsword or the same length? It's about the same length. Uh, you'll find this weapon back in the tutorial starting area. You have to go back there through going to the four belfries and going through the, the anticipation chapel thingy. So once you go back there, kill that boss from the tutorial and I'll drop these weapons. Obviously two-handing this weapon is pretty much a two-on-one, so it's like a throwback to the Godhard Twin Swords in Dark Souls 3. But it just has the exact same thing as a power stancing moveset. Obviously like the benefit is that it's two-on-one, so you don't have to upgrade two separate weapons. So it's actually good for um, early game as well. It does get a B in Dexterity, a D in Strength, with a total damage AR of 407, which doesn't seem that much, but being that simple to use, like um, low requirements, and you can get it fairly early on, and you can get a power sense moveset without having to upgrade two separate weapons. It's really good for early game, and the weapon art does let you buff the weapon, and buffing the weapon gives you an extra 85 AR for 20 seconds, similar to the Sacred Blade. It is quicker to apply, you don't get the um, Sacred Blade attack, but yeah. These are really nice weapons, good for early game, so if you are in a dex build, I definitely recommend using these if you do pick them up. Really solid weapons overall. Next we have the Golden Epitaph, which is a weapon I've covered multiple times in this channel. Looking over the length, just a little bit longer than the Longsword, which is nice. Uh, you'll find this weapon in this Azure's Hero Grave. You just have to go inside, use the Stone Sword key, it'll be right inside there. Um, moveset's exactly the same as a Longsword, which is really good. As for the weapon art, it pretty much adds like 10% extra um, weapon AR. Damage to all your weapons as well, so if you're power stancing, it will actually give you more damage to the other weapon. So pairing it with the McKillen, if you're using a faith build, is really good. I actually didn't actually go over the scalings. So yeah, D and strength, D index already C in faith. Gets a total damage AR of 642 after the buff. I do like to use these two weapons like this, so the McKillen on the right hand, so you can take advantage of that nice R2 attack. And obviously you can just buff using Sacred Blade whenever you want to, and you can just power stance these two bad boys. So obviously, yeah, you were doing about 700 with the McKellen and 642 with the Epitaph. Okay, going over Sword of Saint Trina, looking at the length of it on the shorter side compared to the long sword. As for the scaling, it gets a D in Strength, C in D in Strength, C in Dexterity, and a D in Intelligence with a total damage AR of 512. It does have the passive effect of causing sleep, which is nice as to where you find this weapon. It is right here in the Forsaken Runes, good to find it in there. As for the movesets, exactly the same as a Longsword, which is really nice. Obviously the damage isn't that great, but it does have this weapon art, which can inflict sleep really well. It does buff the weapon, it doesn't actually give it more damage, it gives it more of a chance to inflict sleep, which isn't the best. You know, it's it's, a, it's an okay weapon. But the amount of damage that it does, there's, uh, there's better options. You can't buff it at all, so you're pretty much stuck at this. And there are better status effects in the game than sleep. So yeah, I'm not sure if I really recommend this one. Next we have the Regalia of Okade. I, I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm not even going to try. Um, Looking at the length of the weapon compared to the longsword, just a little bit shorter. This weapon is bugged right now, so when you look at the um, scaling, it gets a D in Strength, C in Dexterity, and a C in Arcane. And as you can see, right here, I'm getting a minus 10 in Physical Attack, so yeah, the scaling is kind of bugged right now. I'm only doing 346 total AR, I should be doing like well over 500 and something. See, so yeah, unfortunately it is bugged, so I can't really tell you how good this weapon is until I fix it. But I can tell you where to find it, and it's in the Jail Cave, right there. So you can find that weapon. The moveset is exactly the same as the longsword. The weapon art, however, is really cool and flashy looking. However, I can't really tell you the damage because I think the damage of this is above the door, so it's, yeah. Yeah, can't, can't really tell you much about this one. Okay, next we have the coded sword. Comparing the length to the longsword, is that a little bit longer? I think it's tied to the longest with the noble sword, which is nice. And as to where you find this weapon, it is in Lindell. You have to find it before you burn the place to the ground, unfortunately. It'd be like some like horse stable area. Um, looking at the scaling, it just has a scaling in faith with a total damage AR of 445. So I definitely recommend using this if you have a pure faith 
build. So like a pure faith cast to build if you have like 60 to 80 faith or something like that. This is definitely the weapon for you. As for the moveset, identical to the longsword, which is good. Weapon art, you get this unblockable blade, which is definitely an unblockable blade that has a lot of range and a lot of damage if you spec into a lot of faith. So overall, really solid weapon for them faith build. Okay, time for the best straight sword in the game, and perhaps one of the best weapons in the game full stop, is the Sword of Night and Flame. Comparing it to the Longsword, pretty much the same length as to what you find this weapon, it's all the way in the carrier manner, somewhere around about there in the garden, you'll find it. As for the moveset, identical to the Longsword, which we always like. Now, as for the weapon art, you have this stance, and clicking light attack will do this attack, and then clicking the heavy attack will do this. So yeah, obviously it does scale with everything, except for arcane, so a D in strength, D in dexterity, B in intelligence and faith. It does have high requirements, so looking at the intelligence and faith requirement, they're both at 24, but doing a total damage AR of close to 700. So obviously, if you're going to use this weapon, I recommend just specking into just purely intelligence and then purely in faith. So like 40 intelligence, 40 faith, that way you can actually use um, sorceries and incantations. Just have a seal and a staff equipped, and you can pretty much just run both of those and have this weapon, which is actually broken because just those, that weapon art that I showed you, like they just, they just do so much damage. You can't charge this one to make it last any longer, but you don't need to. <laughs> it only does four, like 19 FP. This one only does 23 FP, but it's just stupid hell. Like, they just do so much damage. <laughs> they just do so much damage. They're actually broken. Okay, now time to go over my wonderful chart. Obviously, this is where all the damage numbers are going to be. This is where I give you recommendations for the Ashes of War. Obviously, if it's highlighted yellow, that means it's the best. Highlighted gray means it's the second best. Highlighted bronze, third best, right? Okay, so going over the heavy weapons first. Um, Ashes of War I recommend, I'll be Vacuum Slice or Stormblade. Actually, any of the Ashes will for any of these. But uh, for Heavy or Keen, I recommend for all these three here. These are just what's the sum I recommend. Um, but yeah, Broadsword did the most damage for the Heavy. Longsword came in second, and then the Lord's Sworn came in three. Obviously, it's going to be a very common theme throughout. But yeah, the Broadsword was doing 433, which is really nice. Looking at the Keen Infusions, Bloodhound Fang, Sword Dance or Piercing Fang for any of the Ashes of War to use, I recommend all of those three. Um, the straight sword, this, I misspelled that, the Lord Sworn um, sword actually came out number one, then broadsword number two, and the long sword I put in number three. I didn't put it in number three, just did the third most amount of damage. As for other weapons that couldn't be infused that have a keen scaling, obviously the regalia is bugged right now, but the ornamental straight sword was doing 407, which isn't as much as these two. Again, these can be buffed as well. But obviously with the buff that it gives itself is 492, which is really nice, which is why I recommend it for early game. Because that way, like, you don't really have um, points put into any other weapons to actually use those buffs. So if you just have, like, a pure dexterity build, you can get this up in fairly early on, and it will carry you through it throughout. Um, as for the quality builds, broadsword number one again, longsword number two, Lord's one in number three. Um, as for the Ashes Wall, yeah, anything from Heavy or Keen is perfectly fine. But yeah, Broadsword really tanked me out at number one spot. As for Faith, yep, Broadsword again, Longsword number two, Lord's one three. Yeah, I'm not even gonna bother saying these anymore, it's just right there. <laughs> but as for the um Ashes of War, the flaming strike, I really like. It's a nice um fire attack that has a follow-up that buffs your weapon for free 85 damage. Um, the Flame of Red Mains, a really nice attack for PvP. Sacred Blade, same as a Flaming Strike, free damage, free 85 damage. Um, Golden Vow, um, free attack, free defense. Like to see it. As for the weapons that cannot be infused, the Sword of Light and Flame, obviously. Golden Epitaph does a lot of damage. That does the most damage out of all the Faith weapons. Obviously this one has an intelligence scaling, which is why it's doing a lot of damage. But the McKillen will do a little bit more as soon as you buff it with the Sacred Blade, it'll do 7, 674. Coded Sword isn't doing that much damage, but obviously if you have like a build where you're rocking like 80 Faith, being that it only has a Faith scaling, you're going to be noticing this is going to be doing a lot more damage than that. 
Um, as for magic, the Glimstone Phalanx is really the only one I would recommend. Either way, for magic, I'd just recommend you using any of these Ashes of War. But yeah, um, Broadsword once again, tanking out. Lazuli Glimstone Sword, that's the one I recommended for PvP that does the Glimstone Pebble, doing 592. Carry Knights are doing the most, other than the Sword of Mind and Flame, obviously, but that has a face scaling. Doing 625. The Crystal Sword does about a little bit more than the Rod and Crystal Sword, but this one does have that option of having that Scarlet Rod build up, which is really good. And I just do not recommend this Sword of St. Trino at all. The damage is way too low, and the sleep isn't really that good either. As for Cold, Ball Frost Stomp is just the best Ashes of War. It's really, really good. So just Power Stancing. There's any other cold weapon, broadsword doing 551. Also, one thing I do recommend if you do have points into intelligence and points into any other any other stat like dexterity or strength, I recommend going for a cold infusion over a magic infusion. If you have pure sorcery, so you have like a lot of intelligence and not much in any of the other stats, then I would recommend magic. But cold, being that it only does like a little bit less damage, and you just have that option to um freeze enemies. Inflicting cold is really nice, and the whole frost dump is as broken right now. So yeah, there's that. That's it for those. And so now moving on to my wonderful rankings. Obviously, at number one, Sword of Light and Flame. It's broken. It's busted. It just does a lot of damage. It's obvious. Mikellan Night Sword. I just really like it as a faith weapon. The R twos are really nice, and just the fact that you can just bust something in Sacred Blade. The projectile does a lot of damage, and you just get eighty five. Free holy damage for 20 seconds. Carrion Knight Sword is the best um, magic sword. Coded Sword, obviously for them pure caster builds and faith does really does work wonders for that type of build. Okay, so now as to now why I put the long sword over the broadsword, even though the broadsword was doing more damage, is that I just like the moveset of the long sword that much better. The broadsword's like rolling attacks and um uh heavy attacks. I'm not a fan of at all. They're really just they're just not really usable as much as the long swords are. Even though the long sword is doing less damage throughout, it's not that much less damage that it's worth having the broadsword over. So yeah, I just feel like those rolling attacks and um heavy attacks are just invaluable to have. Um seven, I have the golden epitaph. This is another just really go-to faith weapon. If you got a power stance, obviously I recommend the McKillen with the golden epitaph, having the McKillen in the right hand. Um, at eight, I have the rod and crystal sword, really nice for that scarlet rod build up and good for those magic builds. So have this in your offhand, pairing it with something like the carrion is really good. Um, Lazuli, I recommend this one pretty much only in PVP, just to be really annoying and just spamming that weapon up. Um, ornamental straight sword, Obviously, it's only better for um, early game, and it's going through like your just first playthrough. This one will help carry you through, but as soon as you get to like higher levels, you're gonna notice that it's not gonna be doing as much damage as it used to. Um, at number eleven, the Lord Sworn. It's just heavily outclassed by the Longsword and the Broadsword in every category, except for Keen. This one will do will do the most. But yeah, so if you do want to have a straight dexterity build, and you want to be able to buff your weapon, then go with a Keen infusion with the Lord Sworn. But that's its only use that it has. Um, number 12, Warhawk Talon, just because of the fact that it looks fucking cool and that heavy attack, that double swipe heavy attack, is really nice. It gets a really nice lunge. Even though it doesn't really do as much damage as the rest of the stuff, those heavy attacks really just do it for me. 13, I put the Crystal Sword. It does do more damage than the Rodden, but obviously it doesn't have that um, Scarlet Rot build up, so it's just really just outclassed by it, so it really is not much use for the Crystal Sword. Um, 14, I put the Sword of Saint Trina. It doesn't do much damage. Like, the sleep is okay. It's the only reason I put it to 14 because it does inflict sleep. But you have to spec into magic to be able to use it. So, uh, it's just really not that good because the damage is really low. As you can see here, yeah. A lot less than everything else. At 15, I put the Noble Slender Sword. Again, another weapon that's just heavily outclassed by the Long Sword and Broad Sword. Only reason it's up this high is because of the length of the weapon. It is tied for the longest um, straight sword in the game, so that's really good. But that's the only thing it has going for it. Other than that, it's just another useless straight sword put in the game. Speaking of useless, the weathered straight sword. 
why does it even exist? This is going to be one of those weapons that you just forget actually exists. It's just heavily outclassed by everything else here. Like, it's just a poor man's longsword, but just does considerably less damage. I don't know why they even made this thing, why it's even in the game. I don't get it. I don't get it. Look at something like the short sword. Like, the short sword's supposed to be bad. Like, it's a short weapon. It does, like, meh damage. It's supposed to be bad. What the fuck is this thing excuse? What's the excuse with the weathered straight sword? You're a new weapon in the series. And you're just fucking pathetic. Anyway, I digress. Moving on. The regalia. It's bugged right now. It's the reason why it's this slow. Two reasons why it's not at the bottom is one, because it looks cool. And two, because the fucking cane sword is an absolute joke to this fucking game and to, like, this... The... Just humanity in general. How about that? Like, the fact that we have this beloved weapon in Bloodborne called the Threaded Cane. Everybody loves that weapon. It's a fan favorite. And then you make another cane weapon, but just make it so comically bad that it's disgusting. Why, why did they do this? It was clearly a sick fucking joke. The cane sword is so bad. Look how much damage it does. It bottom frags in every single category. It just says, why does it do such shit piss poor damage? I don't get it. I don't get it. And not only does it do that, it's one of the shorter straight swords in the game, and it has the worst moveset. And you get it later in the game. I don't... Uh, why? From why? Why did you do this? Why? There is no redeeming factors. Literally none. Like, this one is going to be memorable, unlike the weathered straight sword. You're going to forget about this one. But we're going to we're gonna actually remember this, this sword. We're going to remember it as being the weapon that literally spits on the face of the threaded cane. Anyway, that's my rant over. This video is pretty much done. Um, if you do like this style of video, I will be making more of them. Just comment down below as to which ones I should do next, which weapons I should review next. If you do like it, please subscribe. It would help out a bunch. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this one, guys. Peace.